Hello and welcome to today's edition of Counterman Education Center. Today we're going to take an overall look at the emission control systems available today. First, let's define what this system is. Britannica tells us that emission control systems in automobiles are the means employed to limit the discharge of noxious gases from the internal combustion engine and other components. Well, that's a lot of smoke. We can break this down into three parts. First is the internal gases that are in the crankcase and are largely caused by blow-by from the piston rings. This is one of the earliest forms of emission controls. This is mainly contained and processed through the Positive Crankcase Ventilation System, or PCV. Gases are drawn out of the crankcase through a valve and reintroduced into the engine to be burnt again. Commonly, you will sell the one-way valve for this. It, of course, is known as a PCV valve. Next would be the evaporative controls. These used to vent hydrocarbons from the carburetor and fuel tank into an evap canister that was filled with charcoal. Today's these systems are much more involved. They have sensors in the system and can and do often trigger codes in the vehicle monitoring system. You may sell things for this system like purge valves, canisters, tubing, junctions, and vents. Potential upsells here are OBD2 testers and code readers, as well as more sophisticated diagnostics like smoke detectors that pinpoint vacuum leaks. The third part of emissions are the ones in place to limit dangerous gases created in the combustion process and exiting to atmosphere via the tailpipe. These fun gases can be hydrocarbons, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, sulfur, and nitrous oxide. None of these are good things for us or the environment. In the 60s, air pumps were added and installed on vehicles and are still used today. The purpose of these pumps is to introduce air into the exhaust system, usually in the exhaust manifold or header, to complete more burning of the fuel. Remember, the internal combustion engine is not all that efficient, so there are unburnt hydrocarbons exiting the combustion chamber after firing. Since it's already very hot in that area, all you really need is air to allow further burning to continue. This system utilizes belt drives in many situations and lots of tubing and valves and sensors. All items you may be asked to provide during your daily routine. Believe it or not, with all this burning going on, there is still unspent fuel in the system. Introducing our friend, the catalytic converter. Many vehicles have multiple converters on them. These continue the burning process even further. These get very hot and are very expensive to replace. You should have a variety of sources for them. Some may even be available in a remanufactured form. So far, we've been talking about hydrocarbons. They are the most commonly talked about emission. One that is rarely talked about is NOx, or nitrous oxide. These are very poisonous and highly reactive. They are created in the combustion process when it reaches very high levels. EGR, or exhaust gas recirculation, is a method of limiting the production of these gases. The system, through the use of an EGR valve, introduces already burnt exhaust gases back into the combustion chamber to cool the flame front, thus limiting the production of NOx. You will sell EGR valves, gaskets, and position sensors for this system. Arguably, the next part of this video may be considered drivability, but these components increase the efficiency of the engine, therefore reducing the amount of emissions. The popular O2 sensor directly affects the amount of fuel the engine is being fed. There are other inputs into the system that also affect efficiency. MAF sensors control the amount of air in the system, while the MAP and BMAP sensors give inputs on manifold and barometric atmospheric pressure that is involved. Next, there's a throttle position sensor to tell the system how much fuel the driver is asking for. There are scads of other sensors checking air temperature, coolant, 
and countless other bits of data to make the engine run more efficiently, thus using less fuel and creating less emissions. It's all intricately interrelated. You have all of these to provide your customer along with the diagnostic equipment and tools to service it. That's about all today, and thanks for joining us here at the Counterman Education Center.